Good morning, everybody. Hey, we're glad that you are joining us online this morning. We pray that you and your family have had a good week, and now you're all gathered around, ready to sing, ready to worship. Get out your Bibles and get those ready, because in a little bit, Kenny's going to be bringing us an amazing message. But for now, we're going to sing three or four songs just to connect with the Lord and to, to give him uh, the praise and worship that he deserves. He'd always be with us. His love will never be anywhere that we are. We can never escape the love of the Lord. From the highest mountain to the depths of the ocean. Before I spoke a word, you were singing gold. so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so Says me down, fights till I'm found, leaves 
a night and I I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Was your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. But I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so
this promise one for me when he paid the highest ransom once for all Palm Sunday, great to be in your living rooms, on your iPads, iPods, whatever you might be watching us on, your telephones, great to be here. I guess I shouldn't say telephone, cell phone, whatever phone it is anymore, um, but great to be with you this morning. We're going to open up with a time of prayer. Um, we're going to pray for our nation, for people we care about, and uh, just go to God at this time. Father, we uh, come today, Lord, just uh, praising you today. Uh, this Sunday, so many, many years ago, your son entered Jerusalem. And the place was a little crazy, worshiping, celebrating. And as the week went on, though, it got more crazy. And uh, the people that were waving the palm branches became the people on Friday that would yell, crucify, crucify. Father, we don't come to yell, crucify, crucify today. 
We come to say thank you for the cross. We come to look at it today, Lord, and what it means in our lives. Father, we lift up loved ones that we know that are dealing with COVID-19. We pray for our leaders, uh, local leaders. I pray for church leaders, our state leaders, our national leaders, and world leaders, Father, um, that are really just in a tough spot. And I pray that um, on every level that we put you first in our decision making and that we understand it's about safety. Father, God, us as they, as we look into your word, it's in your son's great name we do pray. Amen. You know, this has always been a part of my life, the cross. You know, I've been going to church since I was a small child like many of you. But he never really made an impact until I was 14 years old. And it never really made an impact until I was sitting in Columbus, Ohio, at the Vets Memorial Coliseum on a Good Friday evening at a high Teens for Christ with my youth group that I was part of at Kirkpatrick Church of Christ. And as we sat there that night, I'll never forget the back doors being burst open and men dressed up like Roman guards leading a guy dressed like Jesus down the center aisle. And it was about 10 o'clock on a Friday night. And that's when this finally hit me. That's when this finally made an impact. And it has never stopped making an impact. What Jesus did for me on this instrument, on the thing that the Romans used as a death tool, I mean, it was painful how they died on it. But what it means is so much. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at it from two standpoints, Jesus and then us. The cross of Christ. What what does this mean? What does this mean in Scripture? And we're going to look at a lot of different Scriptures this morning that will hammer home what the cross is about. And as I was that teenager that sat there on that Friday night, it came alive to me. I wanted to come alive to you this morning. The cross of Christ is a symbol of death. It is a symbol of death. Peter's amazing description of it, when he gave the first ever sermon on the day of Pentecost, listen to what he says in Acts 2.23 to the people. I mean, this is a matter of a month and a half after he physically died on this. And listen to what he says. This man, delivered over by a predetermined plan, God's plan, and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of a godless man and put him to death. Peter didn't mix words. Peter saw it happen. Peter, from a distance, heard about it. And and here was the thing. This is not a symbol that, I mean, we, we parade it around sometimes around our necks and we shine it all up and make it of gold, but the reality is this, it is a symbol of death. It was not an easy death that Jesus did. When you look at this, you should be reminded of what he did for you, of how he went the distance for you and I. The cross of Christ, a symbol of rejection, a symbol of of rejection. Not only did he die on it, <clears throat> but he also was rejected by the people that put him on it. Listen to some of the places where he was rejected. He was rejected in his hometown, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without, without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. Jesus was rejected. That's why he went to this cross, 
because people rejected him. The second place where we see it is the Jewish people as a whole. Listen to Matthew 23, 37. Listen to these amazing words. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together. The way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were unwilling, unwilling. Jesus came here to this place because he was direct, rejected by the Jewish nation. And all he wanted to do was be in Jerusalem, to gather them up, to love on them, to teach them, to discipline them. But that's not what happened. He went to the cross because he was rejected by them. His trial. You know what happened at the trial. The same people on this Sunday over 2,000 years ago that waved the palm branches, that shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, that laid down their cloaks for him are the same people on Good Friday that did what we're going to read next. Listen to John 19, 15. Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The leading priest shouted back. Did you hear that? And they were waiting for generations for the Messiah. They were waiting for the one true king. They were waiting for the one to rescue them from Caesar, to rescue them from other nations. But on that day, they said, crucify him. Bring him there. So the cross is a symbol of Jesus' death. The cross is a symbol of his rejection. And the cross is a symbol of his humiliation, of his humiliation. Was this any way to treat the Son of God? Was this any way for the one who created everything that we see to be treated? One way that he was humiliated was he was hung with two robbers. Hung with two robbers. Listen to Matthew 27, 38. And at that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Not only was he humiliated when the people chose Barabbas, but then to take it a step farther, he was put out there with common criminals. And not only did they mock him, and then one asked, hey, remember me when you get to paradise today. But they wanted to humble Jesus. They wanted to humiliate Jesus. They wanted people to realize, hey, he is no better than those two other men. Two other men. They humbled him on the cross, humiliated him on the cross, because he died publicly. Publicly. This wasn't some private thing. This was a place where he had to carry this cross through the streets of Golgotha, or through the streets of Jerusalem, out to Golgotha, up to that hillside. And then the way that they crucified them was, they didn't have clothing on. They were naked in front of everybody. And listen to Romans 3.25. Listen to the words Paul share. And when God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith, this was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. This was a public crucifixion. This was... As humiliated as it could get, people came and they watched him take his last breath. They watched what went through to him. He was exposed, listen to Matthew 27, 35. And after they nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for, for his clothes by throwing dice. Not only was he being humiliated by being hung with two robbers, not only was he being humiliated because he was dying publicly, but he was being humiliated 
because now they were gambling for his clothes, gambling for what he had left, gambling for all that he had with him that day. This wasn't just a physical thing they were doing to him. He went to the cross, and the cross is a symbol of the humiliation that he had to go through. The cross, a symbol of rebellion. (laughs) When you look at this, it is a symbol of he came to change the game. He came to change the way. Jesus' rebellion was the charge that he brought. (coughs) That he brought. Listen to Daniel 2.44 out of New Living Translation. And during the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. Did you pick up on that? Did you hear those words? There's a reign coming. There is a time coming, and it will crush these kingdoms and the nothingness, and it will stand forever forever. This cross is a symbol of the rebellion. Rebellion from what? From the old way. A rebellion from how things was. Jesus came to change the game, and it's not going to pass away. It stands forever, forever. The cross, a symbol of submission. A symbol of submission. We don't like that word, do we? We don't like it when somebody says that you need to submit to somebody. Jesus submitted to his Father. Submitted to how much he cared for us. Listen to John 10, 18, our new living. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down. And when I want to, and also to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. Has commanded. Jesus submitted his life to the cross. He goes, nobody can take it from me. I will give it up. I will sacrifice it. It's a symbol of him submitting to his Father. It is a symbol of how much he cares and loves for you and I. It's what he came to do. Listen to what he says, what Paul writes in Philippians 2.8. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. In this time that we're going through in our world, we need this symbol more than ever. To realize that everything that we've done in our lives This symbol is here for us. To realize that Jesus came and he was obedient to the point of death, even on the cross, he humbled himself because how much he loves you. And what he did on this cross opens up an amazing relationship for you and I. The sacrifice that he made because of this moment on that Friday did not happen. There would be no relationship. There would be no us singing songs about the old rugged cross. We talked about Jesus' cross. Let's talk about our cross. Our cross. Listen to these amazing words. Jesus bore the cross, and we have a cross to bear too. I want you to understand something. You have a cross to carry every day of your life. It is the cross that Jesus has asked you to carry, to carry. Listen to Luke 9.23 out of New American Standard. Listen to these words. I'm going to read them to you this morning. And we, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Follow me. So what are you and I supposed to do every day? We're supposed to take up our cross. And we're supposed to do what every day? Follow the one that was on that cross. On that cross. We must die as Jesus died. 
We must die as Jesus died. Listen to Romans 6, 3 through 4 this morning. Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. We must die as Jesus died. We're going to talk about the empty tomb next Sunday, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But here's what baptism is about. It's about the death, burial, resurrection. But it's about what first? You have to die. You have to die to your old way of life. Just like Jesus died on this cross of physical death, you and I need to die an emotional death, a spiritual death. We need to understand something, that the way we used to live can no longer happen, can no longer be part of our lives. And we need to be buried, and we need to die with him. We will be rejected. Here's a cross you and I need to carry every day. Just like Jesus was rejected, you and I are going to be rejected. Listen to 1 John 3, 1. So how very much our Father loves us, for he has called us his children. And that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Have you ever been rejected because of the cross you carry? I have. It is not a good feeling. You ever been rejected by your family? Think about it. People who don't know, people of this world. Here's a great question. If you've never been rejected, then are you carrying your cross daily? Are you picking it up? Do you understand what it means to be rejected? That you're not going to live like this world. And the world's going to see it. You need to pick it up daily. Don't leave it on the sidelines when you go out with buddies. Don't leave it on the sidelines when you're sitting around a campfire. Don't leave it when you go into a restaurant. Don't leave it when you go into your jobs. You need to pick this up every day and carry it. You need to pick it up every day and drag it with you. You need to pick it up every day and understand that part of who we are is understanding we're going to be rejected by this place. I don't know how often Christians really do pick up the cross every day. Because if we're not being rejected, then we're not carrying the cross. We will face humiliation. We will face humiliation, just like Jesus did. When you pick this up on a daily basis, you're going to face it. Listen to 1 Peter 4, 4 out of New Living. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. Slander you. Uh, I will never forget when I was uh, 16 years old and I stopped living the life that I was living as a 14 or 15 year old. And I started going to church. And so I stopped hanging out with the friends that I loved so much for two years of my life that I ran with because I couldn't go down that path anymore. It was the hardest thing I ever did. And I remember going into my sophomore year of, of high school and walking up to that group, and it was weird because I wasn't going to plunge anymore into it. I'm not saying that I haven't in years gone by because there's other habits that I have to stop. My anger, my temper, whatever issue it may be. But I love what Peter says here, and I love how the New Living translates it. Your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things. I want to come into your faces this morning, folks. Are you carrying this cross? If you are, then stop doing the destructive things. Stop plunging into the things. 
I can't do it for you. Your wives can't do it for you. Your, your husbands can't do it for you. Your kids can't do it for you. Only you can do it. Only you can do it. You need to understand something. This world will humiliate you. People will say, well, why won't you go out and drink with me anymore? Because you've got a cross you're carrying. And that cross doesn't want you to go out and get drunk. That cross doesn't want you to go down that avenue. That cross doesn't want you on drugs. That cross doesn't want you to cheat on your spouse. That cross doesn't want you to watch the internet late at night. It doesn't. This cross wants you to pick it up every day, just like Jesus carried it through the streets for you. That's what it is. And don't care if you're made fun of. Don't care if the world rejects you. Go pick it up. We rebel against this world. Do you know what? When you pick up the cross, you become a rebel. A rebel. Because you're no longer going to be part of this place. Listen to Ephesians 6.12. I love what Paul reads here. It's an amazing passage that talks about who we are warring against. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, and against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits and the heavenly places. You want to know who I'm rebelling against? I'm rebelling against Satan and everything that he tries to do on this planet. That's who I'm rebelling against. That's who I'm in the war with. That's whom I'm fighting every day. Every day. One nice thing about the last month and now the month ahead, I've had a lot of time to pray, a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to reignite some habits that I let fall apart because of the busyness of this world. I want to be a rebel. Jesus rebelled against this world and died on a cross for me. He wants me to pick up my cross and be a rebel. He wants me to be bold. He wants me to tell people that I care about and people he's put me in charge of that, you know what, if you're doing drugs, please stop because it's, it's what are you doing? Love you through it, help you through it. He wants me to tell people that are dealing with anxiety that, hey, let me hold your hand. Let me pray with you daily. Let me guide you through these times that you're going through because Jesus is greater than anxiety. If you trust him, if you trust him, if you're living in doubt, we're going to rebel against this world. So you're not doubting anymore. Whatever you're going through. And here's the biggest thing he wants us to be rebels about. To be totally sold out to him. And that brings me to the next great point. We must submit. When you pick up that cross every day, you've got to let your life be led by Jesus. You got to let your life be directed by him. You can still have a great time. You can still laugh, you can still enjoy things, you can still sit around a campfire. But submit. Too many of us love to play the game, but we need to be the game. We need to be in the fight. We need to understand that we need to submit. Listen to Luke 9.23, the last piece of scripture today. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and daily follow me. Daily follow me. You want to be who you need to be, you have to come after him every day and pick up that cross and follow him. Follow him. I know you're not here in person today, man, do I miss a full church. But does this cross look familiar? Does it? It was probably used for over 15 years in Easter pageants that we did here at this church. See all that dried blood? People would know who made that blood and how it got on here, fake blood. But do you recognize it? 
on Friday nights and on Sunday mornings when we did an Easter pageant. Jesus, whoever he was, whoever betrayed him, and there were some really good men in this church that did a great job of betraying Jesus in our Easter pageants. They would carry this cross down this aisle. And there'd always be somebody sitting there. Normally, when I was youth minister, it was Eric Kreitz. And one of the Roman soldiers got great enjoyment out of this. They would yank Eric up by his suit and have him be the one to carry the cross. That image has never left my mind. Because you and I, we need to carry it every day. I don't know why that is so hard. I don't know why we like to betray the cross as this shiny gold emblem that we're going to wear around our necks. Because it's not a shiny gold emblem. This is a symbol of the death, of the rebellion, of the rejection, of the submission to Jesus did for us. And it should be a reminder to you and I what we need to do every day for him. Every day. So I'm going to ask a question today. If you aren't picking up your cross every day, why aren't you? And you're sitting out there, and I got a question. Do you really believe in Jesus? Have you died with him, as we read earlier? You can stop by here any time, Monday through Friday, during our office hours. And we would love to talk to you about giving your life to Jesus. You can send me a text message, a Facebook post, whatever it is. And we would love to baptize you this week. While you're waiting to believe, to repent, to confess, to give your life to him, why are you waiting? I'm going to pray, and then we're going to enter into communion. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for today, God. We praise you for what you do for us. I thank you so much for the way that you care and love us. It's in your son's great name we do pray. Amen. As we come to the table this morning, and I hope you have your communion with you. I love hearing what people's using. It's so great to hear. Um, this needs to mean a lot to us this morning. I want you to take the bread this morning. And I want you to hold it, and we're going to pray together. And then after I pray, I'd like you to partake of just the bread. Let's pray. Father, we come today, God, just rejoicing with you. We thank you for what the cross represents. We thank you for what it means in our lives, Father body was broken on it, Lord. And we thank you for that. So in your son's name we do pray. Amen. Let's partake together. Now I'd like you to take the cup whatever juice you may have this morning because whatever juice you have represents his blood that was shed on this cross. The agony to cover your sins. Let's pray. Or partake of the cup, please. great to be in your living rooms today, wherever you're watching us at. Um, please listen for announcements about next week's service. We will get those out to you. Also, um, please remember a very vital part of worship is tithing. Uh, you can do that online or you can drop it off to the church or mail it in. That's a very part, important part of what we do every day. Um, we still want to grow the kingdom in different ways. And don't forget that's part of our worship to our Father, to bring in the tithe. And so, hey, it was great spending time with you today. Have a great week. Love you. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you got my soul. You alone are the anchor when my 
says I told Your love surrounds me In the eye of the storm When the solid ground is falling out From underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see And when I'm feeling like I've been let down By my friends and my family I can hear the rain remind me In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the Like a bitter pill I'm swallowing I can barely take a breath And when sickness takes my child away And there's nothing I can do My only hope is to trust you I trust you, Lord In the eye of the storm You remain in control In the middle of the world online today. We love you. Get a hold of us through our Facebook page or call the church office, email us if we can do anything for you or pray for you. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Love you all.